Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. I'm Meg Tardy. Everything is amazing. It's the holidays, Star Wars is out, the Steam Winter Sale is starting soon, uh, the 22nd, if leaks are to be believed, everyone is full of holiday cheer, right? Except maybe for the people suing Val. Oh yeah, the French Consumer Association, UFC, if my high school French serves right, Nailed it. Yeah, got that. Got more French for you. It's actually the Federal Union of Consumers over there is going that after Valve. That sounds Val. way less fancy. Yeah. <laughs> the Federal, you know, I'm not even going to do it, is going after Valve for its subscriber agreements, which seem to have left them a little steamed. No, ho, 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 ho. Eddie so funny. There, yes. The association, whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce, <laughs> believes that Valve's subscriber agreements are illegal and abusive. Among the list of allegations are that one, Steam subscriber agreement explicitly forbids users to sell their games despite the transfer of ownership of digital products and licenses being legal. Two, that Valve declines any responsibility in case they get hacked, which they do, and users' personal information gets stolen, which it does. Three, that Valve claims ownership on the rights of any user-created content uploaded to Steam, which is bullshit. Four, it is impossible to get the money on your Steam wallet back if your account is closed, deleted, or banned. And five, Valve applies Luxembourg's consumer law regardless of the user's country. Maybe they would have had more luck if they'd added Volvo please to the lawsuit? You because don't know that's not in there. That still seems to be how it's going well for them. This isn't the first time Valve's consumer policies have gotten them in trouble. Last year, the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission filed a lawsuit against them as well, claiming that Valve's refund policies violated Australian consumer law. No movement has really happened on that case, partially because Valve decided that, yeah, maybe people should be entitled to refunds back in June, but also because Valve essentially called in sick. <laughs> According to the ACCC, Valve was supposed to send two witnesses from the United States, but they got sick and couldn't come. And because of that, any future proceedings are delayed until at least March 2016. Maybe for that one they can say a dog ate their subpoena. We've been to school. We can help them come up with excuses. I feel really weak, Mom. I don't know. <laughs> Interestingly enough, Valve's counter-argument to that lawsuit so far revolves around them not actually admitting that they technically even sell anything in Australia. For the ACCC, Bell Corporation does not admit that it carried on business in Australia, although it admits that it has made available to Australian consumers online access to use video games through Steam Client pursuant to the terms of a Steam subscriber agreement. In addition, they claim that they don't even sell consumer goods the way Australian law defines them, but instead, they just gave a service. Lawyers, everyone. This news comes on the heels of some other recent headlines for Valve, like the admission last week that over 77,000 Steam accounts are hacked every single month. Holy hell. Once trading was introduced to Steam's ecosystem, hacking jumped by nearly 2,000%, with the subject of most hacks revolving around trading or selling rare items for profit. In a blog post they made about the subject, Valve actually candidly discussed a few options, including shutting down trading altogether but instead they've opted for a few changes to the system and they encourage everyone to use the authentication tools provided for their security. Then of course there's the Counter-Strike Global Offensive Winter Update that launched late last week, which sent the game's fans into a kind of uproar we really haven't seen since the revolt of City 17. The update not only introduced a game-breaking revolver that was as powerful as the op, it also nerfed the AK and M4, which is basically the bread and butter of Counter-Strike. So, of course, the internet did what it normally does and freaked the fuck out, and Valve did what it normally doesn't do and caved into the pressure. In an uncharacteristic move for Valve, which usually likes to use player data to tell the real story over listening to just verbal fan feedback, they completely rolled the changes back after less than a week of fan fury. Way to stick to your guns there, guys. Needless to say, things have been a little complicated for them recently. It's okay though, I mean, we're basically all gonna forget about all this anyway when the winter sale hits and we can get stupid awesome discounts buying all those games that they're, of course, not selling and that we're not gonna even play. But back to the lawsuit! It's interesting that this is two foreign companies who have now taken Valve to task over their consumer policies. And let's get real, the policies, they are just a little bit shady. I love Valve, but that's the truth. That's the position you get to take when you're first to market and basically become the iTunes of video games. And it stinks for consumers because we're sort of forced to agree if we don't want to bend over backwards just to play games on PC. You can't even get them in most stores anymore. You just get them from Steam. In particular, how crazy is it that Valve basically says if they get hacked and your credit card information's leaked, that's not their responsibility. There's also the matter of who owns any content that's uploaded to Steam. Not even Twitter and Facebook lay claims to your content and their terms of service agreements, despite what your grandmother posts like every other week on Facebook. 
Facebook. Uh, rather, they basically state that all the content belongs to you and they get a royalty-free license to use your content as they see fit, which usually means that they're going to either republish it in like advertising or something, something, something. And uh, as for the claim in the lawsuit about not being able to resell digital games you buy, that is more of a tricky and complex subject. Digital goods don't deteriorate in value, so there would literally be no reason to buy a new game from an indie dev when you could get it used from someone in the Steam marketplace, unless of course you did it out of the kindness of your heart, but come on, who does that? Little Timmy can get his own damn game. <laughs> on the flip side, you are purchasing a license to something when you buy it digitally, and shouldn't you be able to transfer ownership of that the way you do anything else? It's kind of a quagmire, but it is funny that we're this far into the digital age and nobody's figured this out yet. But weird terms of service agreements are really uh, honestly nothing new. I mean, in general, we're conditioned to take whatever TOS we get because there's just seems to be like the price for doing business online. No one even reads those anymore. I know I don't. Come I on. I don't. Of course you don't. I you couldn't even tell you the wants. last. I couldn't tell you the last terms of service I actually read. You, I've never read one. You just click it and go. Maybe if I've got insomnia. Very true. Earlier this year, The Guardian did a deep dive into basically every major TOS agreement and made a few startling discoveries. For instance, did you know that both Sony and Microsoft state they can keep you not only from playing online if you break their terms of service, but also offline if you're a PlayStation 4 owner and you keep putting off that newest software update, you're probably in violation because Yep, part of the terms of service state you must do it as soon as you reasonably can. If not, they are actually within their rights to turn your $350 Nathan Drake playing console into a $350 Nathan Drake belt buckle. Which we would still buy and clamor over. Especially yeah. if it were like a 28th anniversary one. I want one. Yeah, too nice. But the good news about all this, rarely if ever, are these kinds of agreements completely upheld in the court of law. Yeah, I mean, good news. Yay! <laughs> you gotta go all the way to court for it to be good news. One of the more famous instances of an EULA being brought up in court comes from Blizzard versus MDY, who created a software bot to autoplay World of Warcraft. Part of Blizzard's case focused on MDY violating the terms of service agreement of their game. Now eventually the court overturned that and Blizzard had to win the case on a completely different legal argument centering around copyright infringement. So you know, if you ever get taken to court over breaking a TOS, I mean, they'll, they'll just get you for something else which is actually not good news. That's progress. The biggest sticking point to come out of that trial though is the court agreed with Blizzard's arguments that World of Warcraft purchasers were not legal owners of the game software, but instead licensees, which means there's legal precedent that you don't actually own the games you pay for. And now on depression, and Valve's <laughs> claim they don't sell games makes more sense. It's not new, but it is something that we as gamers forget a lot. I see people using license versus game ownership in the physical media debate a lot as though having the disc means you own the game. Even then, you don't, you own the disc, but the game is still just a license. Ownership aside for consumers, it is a comfort to know that there are groups out there willing to take these companies to task over their consumer treatment. Cause we're all too lazy too. Yes, the UFC or the UFC have also gone after Google, Facebook, and Twitter over their privacy policies. I like to think it's the UFC. I know, they're, they're like, like really, them, put them in a Kimura. <laughs> All right, these things don't always end up making a significant difference, of course, but Valve did start offering refunds earlier this year after much criticism, so there is always hope. Good luck, Frenchman. Keep fighting those fightings and having some baguettes. I know you like those baguettes. I like those baguettes, too. <laughs> <laughs> the big question now is why has this happened multiple times to Valve from foreign companies and not American ones? Are we just extra used to getting screwed here? Is that the story? That's probably very true. We're all too busy collecting cards and badges as well to bother Valve. We did a story earlier this week and uh, Gray and I were standing really close to each other because we thought that was like the frame and then the frame was really wide. <laughs> so the whole story, they're like, why is Gray so close to Meg? It was like this, it's like, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, no, really though, where should we stand?